ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد then to continue with Kitab al-Tawheed, then we just completed chapter 50. Babu qawlillahi ta'ala walillahi al-asma'u al-husna fad'uhu biha wadharu al-ladhini yulhiduna fi asma'ih. Al-ayah. Saying of Allah the Most High in Surah Al-A'raf, the seventh surah, ayah 180, with the explanation to Allah belongs the most perfect and beautiful names. So worship him in accordance with them and call upon him by them and abandon those who deviate with regard to his names. And we had in the chapter the hadith of Abu Hurairah radiallahu an reported by Al-Bukhari and Muslim that Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Allah has 99 names a hundred except for one whoever correctly preserves them and acts in accordance with them will enter paradise the hadith and we heard that the addition that actually gives the list of names after it reported by Tirmidhi and one narration reported by Ibn Majah and others reported by Ibn Khuzayma and Ibn Hibban and others the actual list of the names as given along with the hadith is not authentic from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam but rather it was from the ijtihad of some of the scholars they strove to look through the Book of Allah and what they could find in the Sunnah right. So the scholars from the early early times, right until this day here, have striven to look through the Book of Allah and the authentic Sunnah and to extract these 99 names. So each scholar, see each scholar who has done that has come with a slightly different list of names and no, no one scholar will be able to say this is definitely, definitely the list, which is why scholars have continued to do strive in that regard right until this time. And as we mentioned, one of the scholars in these times was Sheikh Muhammad ibn Salih al Uthaymeen rahimahullah. In his book Al Qawaid al Muthla. So he produced a list, and the scholars doing so hoping to fall into this hadith. That one of the parts of Ihsa, correctly preserving these names, is to look for these names and to compile them. So amongst these scholars, as we said, was Shaykh Abu Thaymeen, and he compiled a list of 99 names. Not to say that Allah's names, as we've had many times, are restricted to these 99, but hoping and striving to establish the 99 names which are given that promise, that whoever preserves them correctly and acts upon them will enter paradise. So I'll just read, initially I'll read the list that Shaykh Abu Thaymeen brings And I was hoping to write some of them on the board, but anyway, Allah Musta'an. I'll read the list and then try and ex- bring a brief explanation, as we said, for at least the first 50 today, and then rest next week, inshallah. So the Sheikh, initially, he brings a list of 81 names extracted from the Book of Allah, from the Quran. And then he brings 11 names, the last 11, numbers 82 to 99, extracted from the authentic sunnah. <coughs> so he says, from the book of Allah, the Most High, are the first name, Allah, the second, Al-Ahad, the third, Al-A'la, the fourth, Al-Akram, the fifth, al Ilah. The sixth, Al-Awwal. The seventh, 
Al-Akhir, the eighth Al-Zahir, the ninth Al-Batin, the tenth Al-Bari, the eleventh Al-Bar, the twelfth Al-Basir, the thirteenth At-Tawwab, the fourteenth Al-Jabbar, the fifteenth Al-Hafidh, the sixteenth Al-Hasib, the seventeenth Al-Hafidh, the eighteenth Al-Hafi, the nineteenth Al-Haq, the twentieth Al-Mubin, the twenty-first Al-Hakim, Al-Hakim, the twenty-second Al-Halim, the twenty-third Al-Hamid, the twenty-fourth Al-Hay, the twenty-fifth Al-Qayyum, the twenty-sixth Al-Khabir, the twenty-seventh Al-Khaliq, the twenty-eighth Al-Khalaq, the twenty-ninth Al-Ra'uf, the thirtieth Al-Rahman, the thirty-first Al-Rahim, the thirty-second Al-Razzaq, the thirty-third Al-Raqib, the thirty-fourth As-Salam, the thirty-fifth As-Sami'ah, the thirty-sixth Al-Shakir, the thirty-seventh Al-Shakur, the thirty-eighth Al-Shaheed, the thirty-ninth Al-Samad, the fortieth Al-Alim, the forty-first Al-Aziz, the forty-second Al-Azim, the forty-third Al-Afu, the forty-fourth Al-Alim, the forty-fifth Al-Ali, the forty-sixth Al-Ghaffar, the forty-seventh Al-Ghafur, the forty-eighth Al-Ghani, the forty-ninth Al-Fattah, the fiftieth Al-Qadir, the fifty-first Al-Qahir, the fifty-second Al-Quddus, the fifty-third Al-Qadir, the fifty-fourth Al-Qarib, the fifty-fifth Al-Qawi, the fifty-sixth Al-Qahar, the fifty-seventh Al-Kabir, the fifty-eighth Al-Karim, the fifty-ninth Al-Latif, the sixtieth Al-Mu'min, the sixty-first Al-Muta'ali, the sixty-second Al-Mutakabbir, the sixty-third Al-Mateen, the sixty-fourth Al-Mujib, the sixty-fifth Al-Majid, the sixty-sixth Al-Muhit, the sixty-seventh Al-Musawwir, the sixty-eighth Al-Muqtadir, the sixty-ninth Al-Muqit, the seventieth Al-Malik, the seventy-first Al-Malik, the seventy-second Al-Mawla, the seventy-third Al-Muhaymin, the seventy-fourth Al-Nasir, the seventy-fifth Al-Wahid, the seventy-sixth Al-Warith, the seventy-seventh Al-Wasi'ah, the seventy-eighth Al-Wadud, the seventy-ninth Al-Wakil, the eightieth Al-Wali, the eighty-first Al-Wahhab. Then he mentions, and from the Sunnah of Allah's Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the following, the eighty-second Al-Jameel, the eighty-third Al-Jawad, the eighty-fourth Al-Hakam, the eighty-fifth Al-Hayyiyu, the eighty-sixth Al-Rabb, the eighty-seventh Al-Rafiq, the eighty-eighth Al-Subbuh, the eighty-ninth Al-Sayyid, the ninetieth Al-Shafi, the ninety-first Al-Tayyib, the ninety-second Al-Qabid, the ninety-third Al-Basit, the ninety-fourth Al-Muqaddim, the ninety-fifth Al-Muakhir, the ninety-sixth Al-Muhsin, the ninety-seventh Al-Mu'ti, the ninety-eighth Al-Mannan, and the ninety-ninth name Al-Witr. Then with regard to brief explanation of these names, with a slightly longer explanation on what just one or two of them, then a number of books have been written in this present age, depending upon earlier books, and this list, on the, these brief explanations 
are based upon these references, which I'll read now, just so you have some idea where these explanations are taken from. Firstly, the tafsir of Ibn Jirir al-Tabari, Jami' al-Bayan. Secondly, the tafsir of Ibn Kathir. Thirdly, the tafsir of al-Sa'di, Taysir al-Karim al-Rahman. Fourthly, the tafsir of al-Baghawi. Fifthly, Majmu' al-Fatawa of Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah. Sixthly, An-Nuniyyah, the poem which is explained of Ibn al-Qayyim. Seventhly, Iddat al-Sabirin, also of Ibn al-Qayyim. Eighthly, Ar-Rad al-Jahmiyyah of Imam, Imam Ahmad. Ninthly, Bada'i al-Fawa'id of Ibn al-Qayyim. Tenthly, Sha'n al-Dua of al-Khattabi. Eleventh book, Tafsir Asma'illah al-Husna of al-Zajjaj. Twelfthly, Al-Hujja fi Bayan al-Mahajja of Qiwam al-Sunnah al-Astahani. The thirteenth one, Al-Tawheed of Ibn Manda. The fourteenth one, Al-Nihai fi Gharib al-Hadith of Ibn al-Athir. The fifteenth one, Tafsir Gharib al-Quran of Ibn Qutayba. The sixteenth one, Al-Mufradat of Al-Raghib The 17th one Lisan al-Arab of Ibn Manzur And the 18th one Al-Haqq al-Wadih al-Mubin Of Al-Sa'di Rahimahumullah And with regard to the first name That Shaykh Ibn Thimim brings Then The name of Allah Allah and concerning the name Allah, Ibn al-Qayyim said in Madarij al-Salikin, The name Allah indicates all of the perfect names and lofty attributes in all three ways of indication. Since it indicates his divinity, which indicates affirmation of all the character characteristics of divinity for him along with negation of their opposites for him. So the attributes of divinity are the attributes of perfection, being free from any likeness with the creation and free of any deficiency or imperfection. And the author of the explainer of Kitab al-Tawheed in Taysir al-Aziz al-Hamid, <coughs> he brings a quote from Ibn al-Qayyim also, with regard to the excellent qualities of the name Allah that Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah said as for the particular virtues of the meaning of this name Allah then in this regard the most knowledgeable of the creation sallallahu alayhi wasallam himself said I could not praise you enough as you deserve you are as you have praised yourself reported by Muslim from the hadith of Aisha radiallahu anha. He said, so how could we enumerate, how could we enumerate the special virtues of the name of the one who comprises every perfection unrestrictedly and every praise and commendation and every laudation and exaltation and all splendor and all perfection and all glory and all beauty and all good and all eminence, and all generosity, excellence and goodness is for him, and is from him. So this name, Allah, is not mentioned upon a small amount of something, except that it causes it to increase. Nor is it mentioned in a state of fear, except that it removes it. Nor is it mentioned upon any misfortune, except that it relieves it. Nor in any state of anxiety and distress, except that it brings relief, nor upon any state of difficulty, except that it brings ease to it. None who is weak resorts to it, except that it brings strength to him. Nor anyone in a state of humiliation, except that, that it brings honor to him. Nor anyone in poverty, except that he is enriched. 
nor anyone who feels it estranged and uneasy except that it causes him to feel at ease nor is it mentioned by one who has been overcome except that it brings aid and victory for him nor by one who is in straitened circumstances except that his difficulty is removed nor is it mentioned by a fugitive except that he finds refuge so it is the name I mean Allah's name Allah it is the name through which distress is removed, through which the descent of blessings is sought, and through which supplications are answered. Through it, slips are corrected, sins are warded away, and good deeds are brought closer. It is the name with which the, the earth and the heavens were established, and with which the revealed books were sent down, and with which the messengers were sent. With it the legislated laws were prescribed. Through it the prescribed punishments were established. And with it jihad was prescribed. Through this name the creation will become divided into the fortunate and the wretched. With it the true and tremendous day is established. And with it the scales of justice are set up. The bridge laid down and the paradise and the fire established. With it, the Lord of all creation is worshipped and praised. For its right, the messengers were sent. And it will be asked about in the grave. And for it, there will be the resurrection. Dispute is regarding it. And judgment is to it. And alliance and, and enmity are for it. Through it, those who know it and establish its rights will be the fortunate ones and through it those who are ignorant of it and leave its rights will be the wretched ones so it is the reason for creation and command and through it they are established and confirmed and to it they arrive at a conclusion so the creation comes about through it returns to it and exists because of it so there is nothing in creation and no command no reward and no punishment except that it starts from it and ends with it that is what it that is what brings it about and its reason and he quotes the ayah from surah al imran the third surah ayah 191 rabbana ma khalaqta with the explanation oh our lord you have not created all of this without purpose free and far removed are you from that so save us from the punishment of the fire Mm. <clears throat> then with regard to the name Allah then the meaning and these are just brief a brief indication of the meaning which is the one who is truly venerated and worshipped the one deserving that he be singled out with all worship because of his perfect attributes of divinity in regard to the second name that the Sheikh quotes, Al-Ahad, the unique, the one who is alone and unique in every sense, the one alone in his oneness, in his self and in his attributes, alone in his divinity. And the third name, Al-A'la, the Most High, the one who is above everything, having power and control over everything, and the one who is exalted above every deficiency. The fourth name, Al-Akram, the most generous, the one unequaled in his perfect generosity. The fifth name, Al-Ilah, the one who alone deserves to be worshipped. The sixth name, Al-Awwal, the first. And this name, the sixth and the seventh and the eighth and the ninth, Al-Awwalu wal-Akhiru wal-Zahiru wal batin the Shaykh has put most of the names, as you can see, in alphabetical order. These four, these four names are out of alphabetical order and put together because they are all explained in an authentic hadith in Sahih Muslim, explained by Allah's Messenger himself, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So al-awwal, the first, is the one who was before everything, without any beginning. The seventh name, al-akhir, the last the one who remains after everything else without any end. 
the eighth name, al-zahir, the uppermost one, the one such that nothing is above him. He is above everything, and he encompasses everything with his knowledge. The ninth name, al-batin, the innermost one, the one who encompasses and knows the innermost secrets of everything. And the tenth name, al-bari, the originator, the one who by his power originated and created and fashioned the created beings upon their separate forms without any prior example to follow and who created and fashioned the souls in the wombs. The eleventh name, al-bar, with a ba and a ra and a shadda on the ra, al-bar, the most benign and kind the one who treats the creation in an excellent and kind manner, who does not interrupt his fine treatment of them, and who rectifies their affairs for them. The twelfth name, Al-Basir, the all-seeing, the one who sees everything, such that nothing whatsoever is hidden from him. The thirteenth name, at Tawwab, the one who guides his servants to repent and accepts their repentance, the one who guides the servants that they should repent to him, grants to them that they should repent and accepts their repentance again and again. The fourteenth name, Al-Jabbar, the exalted and almighty compeller, the one to whose might everything in the creation submits and the exalted one who rectifies the affairs of his creation for them and who restores the weak and the broken hearted the fifteenth name al hafiz the protector the one who alone guards and protects the heavens and the earth and whatever they contain and who protects his servants from destruction and from evil the sixteenth name al hasib the reckoner who suffices, the one who preserves the deeds of the creation and will bring them to account for them, and the one who suffices and protects his servants. The seventeenth name, al hafiz the guardian, the one who protects the servants from harm and who perfectly preserves whatever deeds his servants have done, not losing any of their deeds, and the one who preserves and protects his beloved servants from falling into sins and from Satan. The eighteenth name, al hafi the benevolent, the one who is ever kind to his servants and ever responding to supplication. In the nineteenth name, Al-Haq, the true one, the one true and certain in his existence, in his self, in his attributes, in his sayings, and in his actions. The twentieth name, Al-Mubin, the clear and manifest one, the one whose sole lordship and right to worship is clear and manifest. The twenty-first name, Al-Hakim, the one fully wise, or Al-Hakim, the all-wise, meaning the one fully wise in everything he decrees, and fully wise in his sayings and in his actions. There is no deficiency or error in anything he decrees, says, or does. The twenty-second name, Al-Halim, the forbearing, the one who does not immediately punish his servants for their sins, their shirk and their unbelief, but rather he gives them the opportunity to repent. The twenty-third name, Al-Hamid, the one who is deservedly praised, the one who is praised and fully deserves to be praised for his self, for his perfect names, for his attributes and for his perfect actions. The twenty-fourth name, Al-Hayy, the ever-living, 
the ever-living who always remains without any beginning and any end with perfect and everlasting life who never dies nor passes away the 25th name Al-Qayyum the self-subsisting one upon whom everything depends the one who sustains everything that exists the one who has no need whatever of anything but rather everything in existence has total need of him the 26th name Al-Khabir the fully aware the one knowing fully everything that is has been or will be knowing whatever will bring harm or benefit knowing the true condition of everything and the outcome of everything the 27th name Al Khaliq the creator and maker of everything the one who brought everything into existence after it had previously not existed the one who has always had the attribute of being the creator even when there was no creation in existence and that's a fine point that Shaykh al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah brings out and makes clear that this was Allah's attribute always that he did not become the creator when he created when the creation came into existence rather he has always been the creator this has always been his attribute so he did not gain this attribute upon the arrival of the creation rather he has always had this attribute the 28th name Al Khalaq the creator who creates again and again the one for whom it is not difficult to create anything the 29th name Al Ra'uf the compassionate and kind the one who is kind and compassionate to his servants the 30th name Al Rahman the extremely merciful the merciful one who has as his attribute mercy the one present the one possessing tremendous and extensive mercy the 31st name Al Rahim the bestower of mercy the one who has mercy upon the creation and as the verifiers mentioned the difference between Al Rahman and Al Rahim is Al Rahman is with regard to the attribute of Allah's self the attribute he has his self, himself of extreme mercy and Al Rahim is his bestowing mercy upon the creation with regard to his action the 32nd name Al Razzaq the great provider the one who provides extensively for the whole of the creation whatever they need and who also provides the provision of beneficial knowledge and Iman for the hearts of his obedient servants Alhamdulillah. indicating the rizq that is general that which is for the whole creation that he provides whatever the whole creation needs with regard to provision and sustenance and the particular that which he provides for his beloved servants the provision in addition to the general provision the particular provision the special provision that of beneficial knowledge and Iman providing sustenance for the hearts of his believing servants the 33rd name Al Raqib the ever watchful or the ever watchful guardian the one who misses nothing whatsoever being aware of all deeds and of whatever thoughts are contained in the hearts of the creation the 34th name as salam the, Im the impeccable one or the flawless the flawless one f l a w flawless without any defect the one free of all imperfections and deficiencies because of his perfection in his self his attributes and his actions and the one who renders his creation safe from his punishing anyone who does not deserve punishment and who renders the creation safe from his oppressing them the 35th name as sami the all hearing the one who has as his attribute perfect hearing the one who hears everything within the creation even that which is most quiet and secret the, the 36th name as shakir the appreciative 
the one who rewards a small deed with a great reward, as mentioned by al tabari and Ibn Kathir in their tafsirs in explanation of it. The 37th name, Ash-Shakur, the one most ready to appreciate and reward abundantly, the one who rewards abundantly and multiplies the rewards of his obedient servants for their deeds, deeds which he himself favored them with, deeds which he himself granted to them, the one who does not allow any of their deeds to be lost. The 38th name, Ash-Shaheed, the witness, the one who witnesses everything, that which is apparent and that which is hidden. The 39th name, As-Samad, the perfect Lord and Master upon whom the whole of the creation depends. The Lord and Master whose control is complete, upon whom the whole of the creation depends for its needs, because of his perfection in his self, his names, his attributes and his actions. The one who remains and never passes away. The one who neither eats nor drinks free of all needs. The fortieth name, Al-Alim, the All-Knower of the seen and the unseen, the knower of whatever is hidden and whatever is manifest, whatever is hidden, whatever is clear, apparent. The forty-first name, Al-Aziz, the Almighty or the Invincible, the Almighty One whom nothing can overcome, the One Mighty in vengeance when He punishes His enemies, the All-Powerful One who overcomes all, and before whose might all submit, and who has no need of anyone. The 42nd name, al Azim, the Tremendous One, or the Magnificent, the one tremendous in greatness, and the only one deservingly held in awe and venerated by the creation, for his greatness in every sense. And the 43rd name, Al-Afu, with an Ayn and a Fa and a Waw with a Shadda on it, the one who pardons again and again, the one who continues to pardon the sins of his servants, and leaves off punishment for them, the one who pardons his slaves so that they do not suffer the consequences of their sins if they repent. The 44th name, Al-Alim, the All-Knowing. And here we'll quote uh, quite a, a longish saying from Imam Ahmad in explanation of Al-Alim found in the book Al-Rad Al-Jahmiya that he said, with regard to Al-Alim, the All-Knowing, that he is the one who knows everything in the seven heavens and the seven earths and whatever is between them and whatever is beneath the ground and whatever is in the depths of the oceans and who knows the place where every hair grows and every tree and the place where each leaf falls and the number of stones there are, and the number of the grains of sand, and the number of grains of soil, and the weight of the mountains, and all of the actions of the servants, and the traces they leave behind, and their speech, and every breath they take. He knows everything. Nothing is hidden from him, whilst he is upon the throne, above the seven heavens, he, the perfect and most high. That being the end of the quote from Imam, Imam Ahmad. So he knows whatever was, whatever is, and whatever will be before it occurs. And he knows the true and hidden reality of everything. And he knows whatever is not going to be, and how it would be if it were to exist. And he has always been the all-knowing, perfect in his knowledge.
The 45th name, Al-Ali, the Exalted, the Exalted One, Exalted in His attributes and His greatness, high above what the wrongdoers say, and the One who is Himself above the creation, ascended upon the throne, and the One who has ascendancy over the creation by His might. And the three meanings of Ulu are all affirmed for Allah. The Ulu of his being exalted and far above what the wrongdoers say, exalted in his attributes, the one who is himself ex above and is ascended upon the throne, and thirdly, the one who has ascendancy by his might over the creation. The 46th name, al ghaffar the oft-forgiving, the one who forgives the sins of his servants again and again, whenever the servant repents, and who hides the sins of the servants, and does not expose them. The 47th name, al ghafur the one who forgives extensively, the one who covers up the sins of the servants to an extent that cannot even be comprehended, and who forgives them so that he does not punishment, so that he does not punish them for those sins. The 48th name, al ghani the independent one, who is free of all need, the one who has no need whatsoever of the creation, the one who is free from any poverty or need, the one in whose hand lie the treasures of the heavens and the earth, and of this world and the hereafter. The 49th name, al fattah Fattah with a fa and a ta with a shadda on it, then an alif and a ha. The judge and opener who distinguishes the truth from falsehood. The judge who judges between his servants with the truth and with justice, with his legislation and with his decree, and who is never unjust and the one who opens the gates of mercy and provision, and whatever is closed to his servants, and who opens the eyes and hearts of his servants, for them to see the truth, and the one who aids and grants victory to his believing servants, and who distinguishes the truth from falsehood. And the fiftieth name, Al-Qadir, the fully able one the one fully able to do anything he wills. Nothing renders him incapable or wearies him. And we'll leave the remainder until next time, insha'Allah. Walhamdulillah wa sallallahu ala Muhammad. Maybe before next time, you can at least get some photocopies of the list of Shaykh Ibn Uthimeen from his book, Al-Qawaid Al-Mufla, insha'Allah. With regard to Shaykh Ibn Thimeen, rahimahullah, then he strove his best to find whatever names he could, as scholars usually do, they strove the best that they could to find the names in the Qur'an. And when they fell short of the, of the number 99, then whatever remained, they would find, they would look in the Sunnah. So this is what Shaykh Ibn Thimeen did as well, striving initially to find the names in the Qur'an. And before, some before, for example, Ibn Hazm, they, they strove and making it condition upon themselves that they would only bring a name which they could find in the Qur'an. But when they did so, their list usually came to around 80, 80 names or thereabouts. So therefore, they ended up taking other names from the authentic Sunnah. The authentic Sunnah, which is revelation, as the Qur'an is revelation. With regard to the names in addition, the ones from the Sunnah, then the Shaykh has also, or the, the book of the Shaykh, gives you footnotes mentioning which hadith brings the names. Obviously a completion of the list would be to quote the, which ayah the names are occurring, the name occurs in, or if they're from the hadith, then where the hadith is. In case anyone who hasn't got this book, anyone who can read Arabic, and wants to benefit themselves with regard to the match of Allah's names and attributes, then make it upon yourself to get hold of this book, al qawaid al mufla It's a book of principles with regard to Allah's names. How we, are to how we are to understand Allah's names, the principles that are to be applied 
the principles that the people of the Sunnah are upon with regard to Allah's names, a reputation of the people of innovation and deviation where they go wrong, and principles to prove where they have gone wrong. This is one of the finest books written in this regard. Then to continue with the list of names brought by Sheikh Muhammad ibn Salih al Uthimin, Rahimahullah, with regard to Allah's perfect names, then we reached the 51st name, Al Qahir, the invincible subduer, the one who subdues his creation from above, to whom everything submits. None can repel what he ordains or depart from what he decrees. The 52nd name, Al Quddus, the pure and perfect, the pure and exalted one, high above every impurity, the one whom the noble angels venerate, the one free of any opposites, rivals, consorts and children, having perfection as his attribute, the one declared free of all deficiencies and imperfections, and free of having anyone with the like of his perfection, or anyone close to it. Fifty-third name, Al-Qadir, the All-Powerful, the one who is able to do all things, nothing renders him incapable or wearies him. The one perfect in his power, the one who by his power created everything in existence, and with his power he controls them, completes them, and gives life and death to them. And with his power he will resurrect the servants and reward and punish them. <laughs> Whenever he wishes something, he says, Kun, be, and it is. The 54th name, al qarib the one who is near, the one who is near to the servants. He draws nearer to those who perform acts of worship and seek nearness to him, and he is close to their hearts. He is near to everyone who makes supplication to him. And also, in addition, he is near to the people with his knowledge and awareness, witnessing and encompassing everything, whilst he is above the throne, the Arsh. The 55th name, Al-Qawi, the one perfect in strength, the one fully able to do anything. None can overcome him. None can repel his decrees. The 56th name, Al-Qahar, the overwhelming subduer who is never overcome. The one who alone subdues the whole of the creation with his sovereign authority and power. Nothing occurs except with his permission. Everything submits to him. The one who subdues the most obstinate and renegade tyrants with his punishment and who subdues the whole of the creation with death. The 57th name, Al-Kabir, the incomparably great, the tremendous one who is greater than everything. Everything else is insignificant before him. He is greater than anything imagined by the creation. Whatever they imagine, then he is greater than that. The 58th name, Al-Kareem, the bountiful, the generous one, abundant in good, the one who causes and makes easy every good and who bestows generously, the one so generous that he even bestows favors upon those who reject his favors and then use them as a means to disobey him. The 59th name, Al-Latif, 
the subtle and kind, the one who is fully aware of the hidden details of all affairs. <laughs> and of that which will benefit the servants and who is kind to them and causes that which is good for them to reach them via means which they had no expectation of the 60th name Al-Mu'min the true and trustworthy the grantor of security the one who is true in his words and true to the promise he has made to the servants and who does not disappoint his believing servants the one who safeguards his servants in this world and the hereafter and who renders his beloved servants safe from his punishment and who renders the whole of the creation safe from his oppressing them the 61st name al Ali the supreme and exalted one the one supremely exalted above everything by his power the one exalted above his creation in his being above them having power over them and his subduing them the one high above and far removed from having anything else like him and the one free and far removed from the lies of those who invent lies against him and free from the characteristics of the creation the 62nd name al mutakabbir the one supreme in glory the justly and rightfully proud the one who is alone truly high and mighty exalted in glory above everything the one who disdains and is exalted above all evil and oppression against his servants and above everything not befitting him the 63rd name al mateen the strong the one mighty in strength the powerful one whose strength does not end and who does not experience any difficulty in his actions nor does he experience any tiredness the 64th name al-mujib the responsive the one who responds to supplications of those who call upon him wherever they are and whatever situation they are in no matter how many they are in number and who responds in particular to those who submit to him and those in dire need the 65th name al-majid the one perfect in glory and honor the one great in honor the one greatly extolled and praised the magnificent one having the having the characteristics of glory majesty greatness and splendor the one greater more tremendous and more exalted than everything the one glorified and venerated in the hearts of his beloved servants the 66th name al muhit the all-encompassing the one who encompasses everything with his power and with his knowledge and has fully enumerated everything and the one who encompasses everything with his mercy and his subjugation the 67th name al musawwir the bestower of forms the one who forms and fashions his creation however he wishes the one who gives form to everything in existence giving each created thing a particular form and appearance which distinguishes it from all other created things the 68th name al muqtadir the omnipotent the one whose power is absolute the one for whom nothing is impossible he is fully able to do whatever he wishes the 69th name al muqit the all powerful maintainer the all powerful the guardian who witnesses everything the one who provides each created being with the sustenance it requires the 70th name al malik the king the sole 
absolute and true sovereign king, <coughs> complete and perfect in his kingship, the one whom there is no kingship above his kingship, nor anywhere near it, everything being incomparable to him and beneath him, the sovereign owner of everything, who does whatever he wishes with regard to the creation, with nothing to prevent or hinder him, whose commands are fully effective within his dominion, the king of all kings. The 78th, the 71st name, Al-Malik, the omnipotent sovereign, the sovereign who is fully able to do whatever he wishes, the tremendous king, who created and decreed everything. The seventy-second name, Al-Mawla, the patron lord, or the master and supporter, the one who supports and aids the creation, supporting all of them in general, and aiding the believers in particular. The lord and master who aids the believers against their enemies the one who causes whatever will benefit his believing servants to reach them. The seventy-third name, Al-Muhaymin, the trustworthy and ever watchful witness, the one who witnesses all the deeds and sayings of the creation, the one who sent down his book and is a witness to its truth, the trustworthy one who confirms the truth of everything he says, and the ever-watching guardian over his creation. The seventy-fourth name, an nasir the helper, the one who aids the believers against their enemies, and makes their feet firm when they face the enemy, and who casts terror into the hearts of their enemies. And just as a nice side point, then Al-Asbahan, he said in his book Al-Hujjah, with regard to this name, an nasir the helper, because of its meaning, he said, it is right and proper that every person, when he sees an evil being done, that he should forbid it, and he should firmly believe that Allah will help him, because Allah, the mighty and majestic, said, in tansuru Allah yansurukum, if you give aid to Allah's religion, he will help you. And he said, so everyone who wishes by his saying and his action to attain the pleasure of Allah, then Allah will aid him and help him. And with regard to the 75th name, Al-Wahid, the one and only, the one who always has been and always will be one and alone, with regard to his self, his that the one who has no partner, no sharer, and no equal. The 76th name, Al-Warith, the inheritor, the one who remains forever, the one who remains after everything else perishes, the one who, inherit, the one who inherits the earth and everything upon it, the one who remains forever and never passes away. The 77th name, al wasiq the vast one, the one vast with regard to his attributes and characteristics, such that none can fulfill and encompass the praise that is due to him, the one vast and tremendous in his greatness, his authority and his sovereignty, and the one who encompasses the whole of creation with his generosity, his blessings, and with the tremendous good which he grants to them, and with his mercy. The 78th name, Al-Wadud, the loving one, and the beloved one, the one who loves his believing servants, and the one who is loved by them, the one who loves his prophets and messengers and their followers, and is loved by them, such that nothing is more beloved to them than him. The 79th name, Al-Wakil, the trustworthy disposer of affairs, the one who is depended upon, 
and is true to his promise, the all-encompassing guardian who suffices those who place their trust and reliance in him, the one who takes care of the affairs of his creation with his perfect knowledge and power, and so is the finest disposer of their affairs. The eightieth name, Al-Wali, the guardian lord, the one who aids, assists, guides and grants success to the believers. The guardian, the master of everything, in control of everything. The eighty-first name, Al-Wahhab, the bestower, the one who bestows his bounties universally and perpetually, giving them freely for no compensation. The one who gives his bounties throughout the ages to all the inhabitants of the heavens and the earth. The one who alone grants health, well-being and strength. The one who grants guidance, successful attainment of what is correct, tawfiq, and firmness upon his religion to the believers. Then with regard to the rest of the names, then the Shaykh has taken them from the authentic Sunnah. So the names from the first one to the 81st one are taken from the book of Allah, whereas the, the rest from 82 to number 99 are taken from the Sunnah. So the 82nd name, Al-Jamil, the beautiful one, the one beautiful in his self, in his names, his attributes and his actions, the one such that everything beautiful in existence is a result and an effect of his beauty, the one so beautiful that when the people of paradise see him in paradise, they forget all the delights and bliss which they enjoy in paradise because of his beauty. The one perfect in beauty, such that nothing is like him. The 83rd name, Al-Jawad, the Munificent, the one whose generosity covers everything in existence, the one who gives liberally and generously to those in need, even when they reject and disbelieve in him. The one who, from his generosity, has prepared in paradise for his believing servants that which no eye has ever seen, no ear has ever heard of, and which has never been imagined by anyone. The 84th name, Al-Hakam, the judge, the one who judges between the creation in this world by his revelation, and who judges between them in the hereafter with his knowledge and who establishes justice for those who have been wronged by others. The 85th name, al hayyu the one who honorably disdains anything unbecoming his mercy and generosity, the one who honorably disdains to leave the servants who supplicate to him empty-handed, the one who covers up the sins of the servants and does not expose them, the one who does not do anything unbecoming his extensive mercy, his perfect generosity and his forbearance. Rather, he pardons the faults of the servants and covers them. The 86th name, Ar-Rabb, the Lord and Nurturer, the Lord and Master, who has none like him in his Lordship, the one who nurtures and rectifies the affairs of the creation by the favors which he showers upon them, the sovereign owner who alone creates and commands, the one who controls the affairs and grants blessings, the one who nurtures, the creator, the provider, the one who aids and the one who guides. The 87th name, Ar-Rafiq, the gentle, the one who is gentle with his servants, gentle in his actions, having created the creation in stages, in accordance with his wisdom 
and gentleness. The 88th name, As-Subbuh, the venerated and perfect, the one venerated and declared free of every deficiency, the one whom the angels venerate. The 89th name, As-Sayyid, the Lord and Master, the owner of the whole creation. All of the creation are his slaves, the Lord whom all of the creation are in total need of. The, the 90th name, Ashafi, the one who cures, the one who cures, the one who alone removes from the servants that which causes harm or pain to their hearts and their bodies. The one whom, the one who cures whomever he wills, such that none can cure except him. The ninety-first name, Atayyib, the pure one, the one perfect, and rightly declared free of all Im of all deficiencies and shortcomings. The ninety-second name, Al Qabib, and the ninety-third name, Al Basit and it's befitting that they are mentioned together. Al-Qabib, the withholder, and Al-Basit, the grantor of ample provision. Then with regard to Al-Qabib, the one who withholds his provision, and other than it, from the servants, in accordance with his wisdom and subtle kindness, and the one who takes the souls at the point of death. And Al-Basit, the one who grants ample and extensive provision to his servants, and the one who diffuses the souls of the living in their bodies. And the 94th and the 95th name, which again it is befitting that they are mentioned together, Al-Muqaddim, the one who gives precedence, and Al-Mu'akhir, the one who puts back. And with regard to Al-Muqaddim, the one who gives precedence, and the one who gives precedence to whatever he loves, should be given precedence to, with regard to their status and their order, in accordance with his wisdom. And Al-Mu'akhir, the one who puts back, the one who puts back, whatever he wishes, putting back whatever wisdom and rectitude necessitates should be put back. The 96th name, Al-Muhsin, the one who acts in a good and fine manner, the one such that all his actions are perfect. The 97th name, Al-Mu'ti, the giver, the one who gives to whomever it is fitting should be given. The 98th name, Al-Mannan, the beneficent bestower of bounties, the one such that all favors and blessings originate from him. He is the one who granted them and favored the creation with them. And the 99th name, Al-Witr, the one, the one who has no partner, nor anyone like him. He who is one in his self, one in his attributes, one in his actions, having no partner and no helper. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the list that Shaykh Ibn Thimeen, rahimahullah, compiled from his ijtihad, from the book and the sunnah, with regard to Allah's names. And then having done so, he mentions that since it is based upon ijtihad, then there are other names that could be included in place of some of these. And he mentions, for example, names which are in the form of compound names, which are of the heavens and the earth, and like that, and names such as that, and names such as Malik al-Mulk, the owner of kingship, and so on. And there are names, because it's based upon, it's a matter of ijtihad extracting these names, but other scholars may leave out certain names 
in include certain others. For example, other names that they may include, or sometimes include, include such as the name Ad-Dayyan, that's established in the Sunnah, Ad-Dayyan, the recompenser, the one who will bring the creation to account, and Al-A'az, the most mighty, and so on. And certain names they others would maybe leave out of the list, such as the 18th name, al hafi the benevolent one. And even Shaykh Abdul Thimeen himself, he mentioned it may be something particular. It may be a name which was mentioned in particular with regard to the circumstances of a certain prophet. And Al-Alim, the 40th name that's mentioned, because you'll find it in the Qur'an being mentioned in attached form. Alimul Ghaybi wa Shahada the knower of that which is hidden and unseen and that which is open and witnessed. Wallahu a'lam. Wa jazahullahu anna khayran. And may Allah reward the Shaykh with good for his work. Any points or questions or clarification? With regard to names like Jami Al Jamil, Al Rafiq, Al Hakim, then with an Arif and Lam, the one, the one and only, then these are names for Allah alone. But with regard to description of the creation, that there may be a person amongst the creation is called Jamil. Without the Alif and the Lam, just a description of him, he is, this man is Jamil, this man is handsome, then there's no harm in that sense, meaning in the sense befitting the creation. Allah is Al Jamil, the absolutely perfect and beautiful one, perfect in his beauty, with beauty befitting his majesty, the beauty of the Creator. Beauty as Al Asbahani said, beauty is such that when the people in paradise are enjoying the bliss of paradise and the delights of it, when they get to look at Allah, they'll forget all the bliss of paradise from the beauty of Him and seeing Him. So if, if it's mentioned about one of the creation that He is Jamil, He is beautiful, just in that sense, beautiful as befits the creation. I mean, beauty which is deficient, beauty which slowly came to him in stages, beauty which passes away, and beauty which is not absolute, beauty which is comparable, that he is more beautiful than many other people, but not the most beautiful. For example, not as beautiful as the Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam, or the one who is the most beautiful of the creation, Adam alayhi salam, whom Allah created with his own hand such that there occurs in the authentic narration that Yusuf, or in one wording, that Yusuf and his mother were given half of beauty, meaning half of the beauty that was given to Adam, alayhi salam. Allahu alayhi With regard to other names such as Malik and likewise, with regard to the Alif and the Lam, meaning in the absolute sense, meaning the king above all kings, the king whose king kingdom is unrestricted, and so on, then that is for Allah alone. In the restricted sense, and those who have a limit, those amongst the creation have a limited degree of kingship. They rule over a certain area with a limited rule that had a beginning and will have an end, and so on. And it's upon them not to op operate whatever they wish, but rather to restrict it to obedience to Allah, and so on. The one is the angel over the hellfire, Malik. Ali. Yeah, like Imam, famous Imam Malik, Malik ibn Anas, yes. the Imam, famous Imam. And with regard to the Alif and the Lam before it, then both are from the names of Allah, Al-Malik, the king, and Al-Malik, the, the sovereign owner. Then both are from the names of Allah, and both are authentic, as been recited by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he recited Surah Al-Fatiha. Sometimes he would recite, Maliki Yawmiddin, the king of the day, of resurrection, and sometimes he would recite Maliki Yawmiddin, the sovereign owner of the day of resurrection. They both are authentic from him.
with, re with regard to what's authentic that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to say after the prayer with regard to adhkar then after the prayer it's authentic that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would seek Allah's forgiveness three times astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah and that he would say Allahumma anta as-salam wa minka as-salam tabarak tiyadha al-jalali wal-ikram and that he would do tasbih of Allah saying subhanallah a number of times 33 times or less than that 25 times in some relations or 11 times and saying alhamdulillah and la ilaha illallah and if it said 25 times then also <coughs> saying la ilaha illallah and these are authentic in the sunnah and this is what's from the sunnah and so the tak takbir that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa would say is there either 33 times or however many times 34 times or 25 times or however many all of those being authentic in the Sunnah and the Shaykh al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah in his book Al-Kalim al-Tayyib then he, he likewise brings these things and Ibn al-Qayyim his student in his book Al-Wabil al-Tayyib that they bring these adhkar that showing that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam after the salam he would first of all say Astaghfirullah three times and as for the takbir then amongst the while saying Subhanallah and Alhamdulillah and Allahu Akbar amongst that. Allahu Akbar. With regard, with regard to Al-Qadir, that Allah is able to do anything, Allah is able to do anything He wills. Nothing prevents Him, nothing renders Him incapable. Allah, Allah, can, Allah can do anything He wills, nothing can render Him incapable. Allah can do anything He wills, nothing can render Him incapable. With regard to, there's two questions here, Buddha's question and what's written here, are the first 89, are the first 81 names only found in the Quran are the rest only found in the Sunnah? Then, with regard to the first 80, 81 names, then the Sheikh has taken them from the Quran, from the text of the Quran, first 81. And also, obviously, many of them will be also found in the Sunnah. Many of the ones that are in the Quran are also found in the Sunnah. Then, with regard to the rest from the 82nd name to the 99th then they are found in the Sunnah and are not apparent in the Quran and with regard to the fact that the Shaykh brought Ar-Rab as one of the names established in the Sunnah then meaning that Ar-Rab with the Alif and the Lam are not attached to something is found only in the Sunnah with regard to attachment to something else, for example, for example, yeah. Rabbul Alameen, and this is found in the beginning of Surah Al Fatiha. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. That is found attached that Allah is the Rabb of the whole of the creation. Rabbul Alameen. So Shaykh meant that, that in unattached form, Ar Rabb is found only in the Sunnah. And with regard to this list, then, it's hoped, inshallah, that the brothers will type it up, edit it, correct it and the proofs can be put into it inshallah as well, the evidence is from the, the book and the evidence is from the sunnah for our rab the Lord then he brings a hadith and in fact he brings a hadith reported by Muslim the hadith of Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said I have been forbidden from reciting the Qur'an in ruku' or in sajda prostration. 
So as for the ruku, then magnify or declare the greatness of Ar-Rabb Azza wa Jal. Then in the ruku, declare the greatness of Ar-Rabb, the Lord, the mighty and majestic. And he brings another hadith reported by Tirmidhi. أقرب ما يكون الرب من العبد في جوف الليل الآخر. And he brings another hadith reported by Tirmidhi. أقرب ما يكون الرب من العبد في جوف الليل الآخر. A hadith of Amr ibn Absa that he heard the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم say the closest or the nearest that the Lord الرب will be to the servant is in the last part of the night. The word actually occurs, Ar-Rabb, unattached to anything. And this was declared Sahih, authentic by Shaykh al-Albani in his checking of Al-Kalim al-Tayyib. Because some of, the, some of the names, for example, Al-Muqeet, as we said, then in the Quran it's mentioned without Alif and Lam. It's mentioned just as Muqeet, without the Alif and the Lam. So some of the names he includes, even without the Alif and the Lam being there. <coughs> through ijtihad but also based upon many other scholars before preceding the shaykh in that as well so many of the scholars include the, include the majority the vast majority of these names Allah Allah. As for the Shaykh's reason, as for the reasons of the Shaykh to include certain names, then we mentioned that he mentioned with regard to Al Hafi, the 18th name. Well, he said, if I can find where he says it, he says at the end of the list, this is what I have chosen by following up and verifying these reports. 81 names from the Book of Allah the Most High, and 18 names from the Sunnah of Allah's Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Even though I have some taraddud, I have some hesitation with regard to the name Al-Hafi because it occurs in the book in restricted sense with regard to the Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam that, that Ibrahim alayhi salam said about Allah إِنَّهُ كَانَ بِي حَفِيًّا Surah Maryam, the 47th ayah that Allah was Hafi compassionate to me so saying it was re- it's reported here in restricted sense meaning Ibrahim alayhi salam said that Allah had been happy to him so the Shaykh put it but then he said I have some tarad, I have some hesitation whether to include it or whether not to Allahu A'lam Allahu A'lam it's a book Al-Qawaid al mutlaq was a book which was written quite a while ago and it's a book which was given which was checked by Shaykh Abdul Aziz bin Baz Rahimahullah and was given an introduction and a recommendation by Sheikh bin Baz, rahimahullah, in the year 1404, which is now nearly 20 years ago. So, in the book here, according to this, Allah is written sometime before that. It's a book that was written a while, a while ago. It's a book for students of knowledge, or people of knowledge at the moment, they highly recommend this book with regard to principles, with regard to Allah's names and attributes. And just in case someone had a misunderstanding, then the, what the Sheikh, what Sheikh Benafi means, Rahimullah brings, he just brings the, the list of the names. The explanation, all the explanation you heard from the of, and translation with regard to these names, then that is extracted from other works, and I've just put that in there, hoping that it will be of some benefit, inshallah. And as with the references were mentioned last week in general, and that if the brothers can type this up, if it's useful, and edit it then with each name there should be references quoted alongside each name for that name the explanation of that name